readers and viewers from Rock Rebel magazine, we are here today with Hannes from Sabaton. Hugh Mordu, Min Pen. What is that? Hugh Mordu, Min Pen. Oh, yeah, I feel good. I have an ear infection. That's sort of why I'm going to ask after every question, huh? So, without the ear infection, my right ear is a little bit quiet at the moment, but uh, I'm doing all good. We're on tour with Accept, legendary band Accept, and a great band called Twilight Force. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're in Milano, Italy, to bring some thunder into your country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let's break the ice and let's talk about this upcoming tour, as you said. You're touring with Twilight Force from Sveria yep. and Axe from, you know, Germany. Yep. So, um, well, how is it going so far so now since the, the tour started a few weeks ago? Yeah, a few weeks ago. It's been nothing but smooth so far. Um, you know, having this two great bands on this tour uh, has been a big honor for us, you know, and having, I'm a huge Accept fan, I've always been, and I've, I'm out there every night watching uh, Accept, you know, and hear these amazing songs that get you really excited to, to go do your own show. So, first three weeks, I think, we're in something like that. It's um, just like a train forward. Great bands, great nights, it's been so much fun, actually. Okay. Well, um, I would like to start the, the interview talking about The Last Stand, your latest record. As you know, uh, it was released this summer, well, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So, after so many months, what kind of appraisal can you make? I'm asking you this because, you know, um, during my last uh, interview with both Par and Joachim, they told me that some fans didn't mm, well accept the, the two singles you've released, mm -hmm. The Lost Battalion and, you know, Blood of Van Yeah. So, what can you tell me about that? Well, I think, I think it's pretty much the same for, our, for ourselves as well, because if, especially when you do an album, you know, then you're so much involved with the, in the end of the recording process. There's so much stuff that you need to put your 100% focus in when it comes to mixing and mastering. Mm -hmm that it's hard to see your, listen to your music objectively. So what I always do is that I pre-order my own album. I've always done this for every album I played on. I pre-order it, pay for it, and then it arrives in my mailbox. Really? A few, you know, on the release date or something. If, hopefully if I'm home. I put it in the CD uh, player and I listen to the album. And mm -hmm. then you got some space in between, you know, from listening to details so much. And so then you can actually really enjoy your own music a little bit more in a way that you would buy Accept's new album or Twilight Force or Iron Maiden, whatever. And a few months later, from what, when it was released, I can really enjoy the album and I'm really proud of what we did. Mm -hmm. And I think it turned out to be a very interesting, interesting album, both musically and historically, um, since it's almost you know, 2,000 years of war history, basically, going from the Spartans and up all the way up until the Soviet-Afghan war in 1988. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people, when you release an album, that they say that the, early, the previous one was the better one. But then six months later, this is the new favorite. Yeah. But I, am the, I can be the same sometimes. I really try to force myself to listen to new music and first and foremost take my time to listen to it. So you sit down, give the new album a chance, and do it a few times before you make up your mind. Well, um, as you know, during the, the press days uh, this summer, I had the, the chance to listen to the old album. So my attention was immediately caught up by The Last Battalion mm -hmm. due to a very specific reason. I'm going to explain you this. Mm -hmm. um, while I was hearing, you know, listening to the song, I was kind of captured by what I was thinking it was the drums, yeah. but after, you know, I discovered that it was a 9mm bayonet. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you uh, something about the recording process of the, the song mm -hmm. and uh, how will you play those parts live? Yeah. Because I'm very curious yeah, about that. That's a good question. I totally forgot to answer your question about the singles. I think it was I think it was a wild card to do those singles because they are very different. 
and I think when people hear something different, you go, whoa, change. That's weird. What the fuck is going on here? I think you want, you kind of, you want something that you're safe with, but you, but you know, like, the regular stuff. But I think it's good when, when you challenge your, ourselves as a band, we need to do that. And then something else, you know, just something different. And this song, Lost Battalion, is played, like it's digital samples that we made. It's gunshots and the bayonet and it's, it's like, it's a ridiculous idea when you think of it, but it turned out pretty cool in the end. It's a real drum beat, you know? So I play it with, um, it's like Yamaha mm -hmm. has these pads called DTX, which is digital pads. So you put the sample on that pad, which is a sh gunshot or a bayonet or Arnold Schwarzenegger quote, whatever you want to put in there. And then you hit it and then it comes, or I'll be back, wow. stuff like that. So that's how I play. Mm -hmm. That's the secret. That's the secret, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, this unfortunately is the second and also the last record done by Toppe. Yeah. Since he decided to leave the band this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he announced, you know, his decision to quit after, you know, a few days after your performance in Rome. I, I so. kind of remember that. So, yeah. um, what has pushed him to, to leave the band since he was kind of so involved also yeah. in the live context? Yeah, exactly. I think, I think, you know, he's one of my, still one of my best friends and uh, one of the musicians I respect highly. So I think he's a man that what you see is what you get in a really good way. And I think what he wrote in his statement, that's the truth. That's exactly what he told us too. Okay. So the decision was his and solely his. And I think that he needed to stay true to himself and what he wants to do. And I think even if I didn't agree at the time, that I think that was the best decision for him. And you've got to look after yourself. And when you feel that something isn't right, and then you need to do something different or change things. Yeah, and the only on. constant in life is actually change. So that's how it is. Yeah, life goes on. It does. And now he's kicking ass with his new band, Tob England, which is called. They just released a new album. I sold he's my soul. He's also got nominated for, you know, Sweden Rock Festival. Yeah, indeed. So. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm more than happy for him. Uh, we talk every once in a while, check up on each other to see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I wish him nothing but the best. And I can't wait to see the crazy man again. Mm -hmm. uh, what could you tell me about the new guy, Tommy Johansson? Yeah. So Tommy has known Joachim and Per from a few years back. So they were the one who recommended him. And me and Chris, of course, we, we are open, open heart and open ears for a new guy. And he comes in with fresh blood into a camp. That's Of course, it's hard to lose a band member, you know. It's a big deal for everyone. Especially when it's not your decision. You know, mm -hmm. so but Tommy is great. He come, comes in with a fresh attitude. He's a great guitar player, great singer, great piano player. You know, he's multi instrumental and uh, nicely young in his way of being, with a lot of energy. So yeah. I think you can also you know understand that also by seeing live videos. Yeah. He recently done. Yeah, he's good. very energetic also. On yeah, stage. yeah. Where he fits in the camp. Yeah. Like a glove. So I'm happy to have him here and he's doing a great job and I really think that he was so well received by all the fans all over the world and I also think that that's the way it should be. Okay, okay well as you know we are here today in Trezzo uh, at the Live Music Club. Yep. You've never played here before no. but it's one of the best venues we have in Italy. And as I said you're sharing the stage with Twilight Force mm -hmm. and Hexet. So I would like to ask you this, since you know mm, the matter kind of you know mm, was kind of doubtful for your fans because you know uh, they told, oh you know Accept is going to support Sabaton <laughs> while it will be well it has to be Accept to open you know to be opened by Sabaton. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you something about you know mm, concerning these disapprovals mm -hmm. because to me it's such a great package, first of all, and you have to enjoy, you know, a live concert with the bands you're going to see without any, you know, prejudice or mm. 
stuff like that. So how would you answer to these fans? Well, I think you said it there already. I think that I don't, I don't, I don't see it as first support band or second support band and headliner. I, and I really don't because I just see it as a good, really good night with really good music. And we never take a support band, if you now want to call it a support band, with us that we don't like. Why would we do that? You want to have a great support band or opening or special guest or whatever to make the night as good as possible for the fans to get as much good music as they possibly can. And then the other factor in this is that we all accept fans. Always. Have been. I've been forever. So you know, so every night I'm out seeing except playing these amazing songs and they sound in my opinion better better than ever. It's, it sounds great. They're a hungry band and, and they're kicking ass every night. So f screw that headliner, whatever. I don't care if we s start. I could play the first whatever from 7 until 7.30 mm -hmm. and we would kick as much ass as we do playing 90 minutes, I hope. Mm -hmm. But um, hey, it's all, all a good night with three great bands and having a good support band uh, playing before you makes it just makes everybody better mm -hmm. so I think it's a good trigger of getting you know stepping up a level mm -hmm. so, okay yeah. well um, as you said it would be at least to me it would be such a great night tonight so talking about the set list I know that Sabaton kind of reserves some surprises every now and then mm -hmm. to the audience for example sometimes you ask the audience to choose a a song yep. they like, or maybe you choose something they want to hear, mm -hmm. maybe something from the past or whatever. So um, I suppose the set list will be kind of based on the new album, basically, but will you research some nice gem also? Um, there's a set list. <laughs> it's hanging right there. I think that um, that is it's a great set list. It's, um, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun playing the set list. And, you know, now we're getting to that luxury problem of having so many albums mm -hmm. that you need to uh, pick something from every album, so it's, it will be impossible to make everybody happy. Yeah. That's it. But that's why we tour so much, so we come back, you know, every once in a while to play different, different set lists. Yeah. But I'm really happy that, or I, I hope that people are really happy with, with the set list. And if not, let us know. Mm -hmm. We are here to play the music for you. Okay. Not for ourselves. So. Hmm. I guess this question will fit you as well. What can you tell me about Audrey and Walter? Well, I can tell you as much as Audie is here today. Hello. Yeah. My dear colleague, Audie the Tank. Walter is on a vin winter uh, holiday, getting uh, like his energy back and stuff like that. And then I think he will... Uh, go into his little cases and maybe fly over seas, mm -hmm. maybe, so, but they're doing good, they okay. need some maintenance every once in a while, but, yeah. he needs the holidays, they, he need, yeah. Walter needed the holidays, he told us specifically before this tour, okay, well, waiting to see you, you know, in a few hours on stage, I wish you all the best, thank you, really glad to. <laughs> and uh, as our tradition once, I give you the chance to, to share the final words to whoever is going to see this. Yes, so. all right. Well, Italy, you crazy people, thank you for having us here time after time, and we have such a good time every time we come here. And I hope I will see you tonight, and I hope I will see you next time we come here. But mille grazie for all the good times. I hope to see you soon down the road.